We are now free to roam wherever we want with Hickory. Up the path, we meet with Al, who tells us to be on our guards, and the game teaches you how to switch night and day, and how monsters are usually stronger during nighttime. We get our first side story and help Al get his stuff back. I got distracted by a chest across the river and decided to check if anything interesting could be found on the right panel. I'm glad I did so, because I run into a lighthouse with a red chest containing a super nice silver sword. I check out the basement but instantly change my mind and get back on track. My goal is to go north and progress towards our next companion. I fight some zombies and level up a bit. On the way we get enough JP to unlock another skill, and I decide to go for an Ervading Slash, which nullifies all positive status effects on a single foe, then unleashes a sword attack. It also unlocks Hickory's first support skill, Bolstering Break. It raises my physical attack when breaking an enemy. On the way, I find a bone spear and reach the southern Ors Rush wild in the wildlands. We get to fight these little weird actual guys and some mole people. We find a nameless sword, but it's not as good as my silver one, and stumble upon a strange looking octopus who seems to have his own theme song. He escapes before I can do anything to him, and I just keep going north. We arrive in the town of Ors Rush. It looks like a western town with saloons, vultures and typical music. I rest at the inn, buy some stuff from merchants and decide to leave Hickory alone for a bit as I play the story of our second member, Particio, the merchant. The game takes us back 16 years in the past. On the same hill we were just standing with Hickory, in Aura's Rush. Particio, then a little boy, is having a conversation with his pops. He already talks like a promising merchant and seems to attach a particular importance to honesty. They're soon joined by Roke, Particio's father associate, and we learn that they bought this land together in hope of finding lots of silver. Pops makes me go to see people and try to buy their silver. Now, we can use Particio's daypath action, purchase. We get a silver nugget for dad and head back to him. Everyone's happy. Rock talks about the start of the age of silver and we're gonna be super rich soon. Comes a fast time lapse and we are now 8 years later. Looks like the city has flourished, and we meet with Particio selling silver ore and proving his worth to buyers. He casually makes 1.8 million dollars and goes home after a day of work. They have another super positive conversation with his pops on that hill, until we get interrupted by one of our workers coming to tell us a gang is tearing up mischief at the mine. We decide to go help, but first use Particio's night path action, hire and get some help against the gang members in exchange of a few leaves, which is the currency of the game. Particio's hired helper can also help him get some bargains buying stuff. We hire a dude and make it to the east of town where the mine is. We meet with the miners who call me the White Stallion and we take on gift stocks. Particio can fight with either a pole arm or a bow. We easily draw them off and decide to celebrate with food and drinks. In the meantime, we catch a conversation between Pap, Particio's dad, and Roke. Roke says he's leaving for good, gives us a speech about capitalism and tides always changing. He also mentions a flaw in the contract. Roke leaves and meets with Particio, who just came back from his party. He tells us he's leaving since the Age of Silver is coming to an end and asks us if we want to join him to the east to enter the Age of Steam. He compliments our merchant's talents and Particio declines, claiming he wants to stay and work hard on the town he helped build. Roke then leaves for good and another time lapse takes us another 8 years later, in the present day. The town seems to have lost its former glory and Pap is seen coughing in bed, visibly sick. We finally hear about this crucial flaw in the contract that says that the original owner of this plot of land retains the rights to buy it back at any time they so please. Pab then goes on a rant about how rotten landowner who's robbing them of every little profit they make on silver and the downfall of the town. It seems he works so hard he's now very sick and needs medicine. We leave the house in order to buy said medicine and we stumble upon Particio's old miners who complain about having no jobs and fighting for every little piece of bread they can get their hands on. Particio feels awful about the situation and gets angry about poverty until Gills comes up and we learn he sided with the landowner. He rubs the contract in our face and tells us about raising taxes. Gil makes a weird lemon analogy, laughs and finally leaves. Particio goes home to give his dad the medicine. The whole situation ended up helping Particio finally take action. He meets with the unemployed miners at the tavern and they all decide to rebel against the greedy landowner. They have a nice speech about taking back their lives and we decide to make it to Gif's mansion on the other side of the mines. We get there, fight some thugs and sentinels, I find a shield and a helm to raise my defenses, get enough JP for a new skill so I unlock Ember, a spell that deals fire damage, save, get some medicine and face with Gif in his office. We tell him that we're not doing this anymore and he proceeds to call me as stupid as my dad. He then tells us the flaw in the contract has been added at a later date and my gullible father bought it so easily. Particio is now mad about the trick and the fight ensues. 
As usual, we start by cleaning up the lackeys on his sides, and after giving him trouble, Particio's latent power activates and lets us instantly replenish my BP, these little red dots that let me launch more powerful attacks. We finish Gif off, and he begs for his life as he opens his safe full of coins. Particio asks for information about the landowner, and OMG, it's been rock from the start. Particio breaks down and can't believe his ears. Screen fades to dark, and we're back in Ors Rush a few days later, where life seems to be going back to normal. And we even see that Gif is working for Pap so he can pay up his debt. Our Pops looks like he's doing better. He takes us to the good old hill and after dissing Mr. Rock, he tells us that we shouldn't worry about him in the town anymore and we should leave and fulfill our potential. Particio says he wants to use his talents to make the world a better place and fight poverty. And with the encouragements of family and friends, Particio takes his leave. I'll be back once I eliminate that devil called poverty from the world. 